Hello once again and welcome back. This is Jennifer McGuire. So today I am revisiting the idea of bridge cards. I did a bridge card video a while back and I'll link to it here. And afterwards I got a lot of requests to do more. So today I am stepping the idea up. I'll make slimline uh, bridge cards. I'll make die cut bridge cards, all different types. Now, if you're not interested in bridge cards, no worries. I do have other tips and techniques for you today in getting more from your die cut letters and also from your stamped backgrounds. So I hope that you'll find something that inspires you and maybe you have some products that you can use to create a similar type of bridge card. Okay, so let's get started with this example here. I'm going with the most advanced one first, simply because I think it's a really unique and fun design. So let me show you what the completed card looks like first. So it's a slimline card, and check it out. It's a bridge card that stands up nicely. This is a great card design if you want to create something special that the recipient can put on display. For this card, I'll be using the new Pink Fresh Studios Every Good Thing stamp set. This is a large 6x8 set, and it has very easy layering or building images to create a wreath. Although I need only three wreaths for this particular card design, you'll see me stamp more wreaths in additional colors. I might as well do so while I have all my stamps out. I'm using my Misty stamping tool to save time, but you could use an acrylic block. I have positioned the first image of the wreath in the bottom of my stamping tool. I stamped that with blue ink, and now I'm shifting up to the top of my stamping tool and lining up the next image, and I'll stamp this in green. This is a great way to save time by having one image on the bottom and one on the top because you can just shift your cardstock between and move on to the next one. I'm using all Pink Fresh Studio inks today because the colors are beautiful. So I continued to stamp a bunch in blue and then I also did some in peach. I'm going to skip through most of the stamping here because the focus of this video is on the card design. However, this is very simple. I did the first layer in lighter colors, and now I'm stamping with the darker color for the second layer. So you can see the beautiful wreath that you get very quickly using these easy to line up stamps. I know some people struggle with layering stamps. If you're one of those, I recommend checking out Pink Fresh Studio because theirs are very forgiving and they really line up quite nicely. I then use the coordinating die to cut out all of my wreaths, and again, I have some left over. I'll just be using the blue and yellow ones today. Now that our wreaths are done, let's do that blue piece that's in the inside of our bridge card. It has those white stripes on it. For this, I'll be using a new cling stamp from Pink Fresh Studio, and the cool thing about this cling stamp is there is a die that coordinates with it. I'm not using the die on this card, but I will use it later in this video. So let's look closer at this cling stamp. What's neat about it is you can take each of the stripes out so you can easily stamp each stripe in a different color. I'm going to just do all white stamping for this example, but at the end of this video, I will do a rainbow example. So you can stay tuned for that. For the inside of this bridge card, I'll need a piece of cardstock that is nine inches long and a little less than two inches wide. I'll use my T-ruler to find the midpoint, which is at four and a half inches, and make a little line there. This will help me to line up my stamping, but you could skip it if you wanted to. I took out the top stripe of the cling stamp, and I have it in my Misty stamping tool here. I could have left it in, but I decided I wanted to stamp mostly the smaller stripes at the bottom. I'm putting my piece of cardstock in there so that the pencil line lines up with the top of the top stripe. So you can see how the pencil line lines up with the top of my stamp. I'm putting some tape on that piece because I really don't want it to shift as I stamp. And I'm inking up my stamp with Hero Arts Unicorn White Pigment Ink. Look at that beautiful look that you get. Now I'm taking the tape off of my cardstock and rotating it and lining the paper back up with the stripes. So I can see the extra white ink that's in my Misty and see where to line it up and then I'll stamp again and check out that fun striped background that I was able to get very quickly. I did heat set that to make sure that it doesn't smear as we move on with the rest of the card. The next step is to create the bridge card itself. For this slimline bridge card, I'm starting with a piece of cardstock that is five and a half by nine inches. I'm using my scoring board and a Teflon bolden folder, and I'll score at one inch. And notice it doesn't go all the way to the bottom, don't worry about it. Then again at one and three quarter inches, 
Then from the other side, I will do four and a half inches and three and three quarter inches. So you can just write that down if you want to do a slimline bridge card yourself. So now that I've reinforced those score lines, I'll rotate my cardstock and do the same thing. One inch, one and three quarter inches, four and a half inches, and three and three quarter inches. So this will create the base of our card. And you want to use a heavyweight cardstock for this because you want your bridge card to be strong. I don't think a thin cardstock would work as well. This is about a hundred pound cardstock. I believe it's from Reverse Confetti. So any of the colorful cardstocks that you get from stamp companies are usually heavyweight. My favorite things, uh, Hero Arts, Gina K Design, Simon Says Stamp, Reverse Confetti, those are all nice cardstocks for this. Now I have my blue stamped piece that I can insert right in the inside of our bridge card. I wanted a finishing border on this, so I'm putting an adhesive right on the edge of the bridge card on both sides and putting thin strips of cardstock. One is white and one is the same blue that I used for the stamping inside of the card. When I'm done, I can trim off the excess. Now it's time to add our wreaths to the two edges. To do so, I flatten out the part on the right and I fold the part on the left. So you can see this is folded on the left and I'll put some tape on it to keep it folded as we do this. And the right I have unfolded. Now I have my three wreaths here and I'm putting glue on the left edge and the right edge of the wreath. We want to glue only on those edge panels. So you want to make sure that you're only gluing to the left of the fold line on that left hand side and to the right of the fold line on the right hand side so that your wreaths are only glued on those two parts that will pop up when our card opens. I put something heavy on it to make sure that it glues there because there's just a little bit holding it. I use the same stamp set for that main sentiment that's stamped on the circle that I'm adding to the middle wreath. I also stamped two sentiments on strips and glued those across the bottom and top wreath. And those sentiments are from the Pink Fresh Studio Thankful for Friends stamp set. These, again, only have glue on the left and the right so that it's only attached to the top of those wreaths. Finally, I can remove the tape and we have our completed card. The card flattens nicely to go into a slimline envelope. And then when you open it, it pops up to form that fun bridge card. Now this will stand on its own very easily, which is great if you're planning to make something special that you hope the recipient puts on display so they can look at it often. You can see how the wreaths are only glued to those panels on the left and the right, so it's allowed to pop up. So they look like they're floating there and you can see the stripes through that. So this is a basic bridge card design, but with the slim line, you can fit more on it, which is a really fun opportunity. I would write my personal message on the back of the card, but you could attach a mini card to the back if you prefer. Okay, my next example is another slimline card, but this time it's a landscape version and I have floating alphabet die cuts. So let's look at the completed card first. When you take it out, it pops up and check it out. Those letters look like they're floating there thanks to a piece of acetate. Let's start with creating those letters. There are a few options I wanted to show you. This is new from Pink Fresh Studios. It's the Leah's Ornate Alphabet Sets. So there's a lowercase stamp set and there's a lowercase die set, which I'll actually be using. They line up together perfectly and the die cuts a shadow or an outline of the letter too. There's also the uppercase stamp set and the uppercase die set. So whatever options you like, I tend to reach mostly for lowercase. So I used the lowercase die set to die cut So Proud from white cardstock. This card is going to my second oldest daughter who's starting a teaching job all the way in Oregon this year. Such a crazy time to start that, but I'm really proud of her for being so excited and determined to make it work. Now I want these letters to look like they're floating across the bridge card. So I took a piece of acetate that I keep from some recycling. Any kind of clear uh, acetate or transparency would work. I put some tape runner on the back of each of my letters here that I cut from white cardstock. And I'm arranging them onto the acetate. I just taped it onto the blue paper so it would be easier for you to see the acetate itself. 
Now these letters are not complete, but this is just a start and we'll stay with this for now. I really like how there's the outline included on the die so you can do them together as I did or separately if you prefer. So now I just trim that down so that it's a long piece and narrow. Let's set that aside and next do that colorful piece that's in the inside back of our bridge card. For this, I'm using a brilliant product. This is the Pink Fresh Studio Sweet Bloom Stamp. And then there are coordinating stencils, a set of three stencils that allow you to color it very easily. So let me show you how this works. I decided to make this background a little more subtle by stamping with gray ink instead of black ink. So I'm using Rocky Shore from Pink Fresh Studio. It's a great middle gray. I'm stamping this twice so I can cover a larger piece of cardstock. Next, I'm taking the coordinating stencils that you can get to go with this background stamp. I'm lining up the first stencil, which is the leaves, and I'm inking over that with Grassy Knoll ink from Pink Fresh Studios. And notice that I'm applying the ink uneven, so there's some variation, a little lighter areas and little, little darker areas too. The reason I'm really excited about this is look at the beautiful results you get very quickly. It would have taken me a long time to get that same look with Copic markers or something else. So this is a great time saver and stencils have a pretty good price point. So now I'm shifting the stencil to the other half and I'll apply green ink there too. Now it's time to come in with the next stencil. I'm lining that one up. Now this time I could have applied one color over the whole stencil and all the little flowers would be the same color but I thought it'd be fun if I did different color flowers. So I'm using my iCrafter small blending brushes. These are small, so you can get into tight areas like this. And I'm applying different colors of Pink Fresh Studio inks to different flowers. It's still a very quick process and much faster than coloring by hand. After I've done that portion, I'll move my stencil to the other half and do the same thing there. This is a really easy way to get multi-colored uh, stenciling. Use a tiny brush like the iCrafter small blending brushes. Now this is the third stencil and it colors these larger flowers and I'm putting darker ink towards the base of the flower and kind of fading it out towards the tip. So there very quickly I'm able to create this large inked colorful background and since I use gray ink it's a little bit softer than if I would have used black. Now that we have those pieces ready, let's create the bridge card itself. You can write down these measurements so you can use them later if you want. I'm starting with a piece of cardstock that is four inches by 11 inches. Heavyweight cardstock is good. From one end, I'm scoring at one and a quarter inch and then at two and a quarter inches. So you'll see I reinforce that by doing it twice. Then I rotate the cardstock and do the same thing. One and a quarter and then two and a quarter. Now I will fold along those score lines. So I first do the inside score lines and I fold those in towards each other and then I fold back against that on the other score line and you end up with a simple bridge card. Okay, so now it's time to assemble everything. I trim down my inked and stamped background and I'm gluing that to the inside of the bridge card, leaving a little bit of a white trim. That wasn't intentional, I accidentally cut it to the wrong size. Now let's finish off our So Proud. I thought it'd be fun if the letters were gold glitter. So I'm using this Memory Box glitter pad. It's got beautiful colors in it and it die cuts nicely. So I'm gluing the gold glitter letters on top of the white. So I can see that white outline and look how beautiful that looks. Because I have that white outline, the gold glitter letters stand out more against that stamping on the inside. I'm crazy about the results of these dies, so I'll be using them more in the future. Now to assemble, I will fold the side on the left and tape that closed. And I'll leave the side on the right open, so that's flattened and not folded. We need to adhere this clear piece so it stretches from that left hand panel to the right hand panel. And we only want to put glue on the panels itself, not the inside portion. So let me show you. I'm using strong double-sided tape from Lawn Fawn and I'm putting that right on the edge of this panel, this little folded panel here, up against the fold line. So right to the left of the fold line. I then will put some of the same double-sided tape on a thin strip of yellow cardstock. This, side, this could be as wide as you want it to be. Now I'm taking the left edge of my acetate here and putting it onto the adhesive that's facing up so now that it he the acetate is hanging off that left panel. 
and I'll sandwich that by putting a piece of yellow cardstock strip on top of it. So you can see how it's hanging off that little folded panel on the left. Now we'll need to do the same on the right. So I'm taking the same double-sided adhesive and putting it to the right of that fold line. Sorry, my head gets in the way. I wanted to get it just right. Then I will put adhesive on the back of a yellow strip and have that ready. Now we'll take the card and fold it closed and then press the acetate into the exposed adhesive. Then I can put my yellow cardstock strip that has adhesive on it on top of that, right up against that folded edge to sandwich it there. And now our acetate is just kind of floating there between the left panel and the right panel. And I did trim off the extra of the acetate. I also added a thin strip of gold glitter cardstock next to the yellow strip on each side. That's simply just to add a little interest and pull in that gold glitter that's on the letters. Now I had some acetate still sticking out there that I wanted to cover. So I just glued some white cardstock on the top of those flaps. You don't have to do that. I could have trimmed my acetate, but once I get these panels glued on these edges here, I'll just flip it over and trim off the excess. So it looks nice and my acetate will be sandwiched in there. So here's the completed card. It fits into a slim line envelope just fine. And when you take it out, you can see how it pops up. I would write my personal message on the back of it, but you could also adhere a mini card there too. I'm crazy about the look of these floating letters and the stamping behind it. If you don't have die cut letters, you could have other little stamped images float there, or you could have die cut words, anything you want. I did also add a You Amaze Me sentiment right underneath So Proud, and that's from this Pink Fresh Studio Through the Trees stamp set. This is an older one. I've used it in a video before, and I will link to it up here in the top right. Okay, it's time for another card. This time it's a traditional four and a quarter by five and a half inch card. It's another bridge card that incorporates a background die cut. So this is just another creative way of using your products with bridge cards. So here is the final card so you know which direction we're headed. And check it out, you have those white cardstock strips that stretch across the bridge card and the flower is floating on it. You could use any stamps for this, but I'm really excited about this new set from Pink Fresh Studio called Sending Love and Hugs. I'm gonna show you something really creative that you can do with this. Now this is a very basic layering stamp set, very easy to line up, very forgiving, but I'm going to show you how to use multiple ink colors with it. And this works with a variety of stamps. So let's start with the first layer. This allows you to stamp all of these flowers in the same color, but what if you wanted different colors? You can actually cut your stamp apart. I know this will freak many of you out, but notice there's a lot of space between each of these images. So I can cut between them very easily and I can always assemble them how they were originally intended on my acrylic block or my stamping tools. So there's no harm in it. So let's do these first two big flowers. I'm lining it up with that image that I already stamped. This image is my key. I'm gonna keep that key. Now I'll switch another piece of cardstock in there and stamp this with whatever ink I want. And I'm gonna of course do many of these so I have them all in hand. When I'm done, I'm going back to that main key. I stamped that before I cut the image apart. I lined up the next set of flowers with that. Now I'll stamp those onto my cardstock in a different color of ink. You could do try to ink up just some, some flowers some color and other flowers other colors. This is so much easier. So now I'm in with my final two parts of that stamp that I cut up, lined them up with the key. Now I'm stamping, stamping them onto my cardstock. So now I have all of my first layer done, but in multiple colors. Let's come in with the leaves next. I decided to keep this as is and stamp them all in the same green. Now it's time for the second layer of our flowers. And I'm cutting it apart just like I did on the last one. I did first stamp on my key with those so I could line it up. And here, let me show you. So here I'm doing the first part with the uh, red color, a little bit darker than the first layer that I stamped. Going back to my key, you can see that second layer stamping there. Lining up the next set that I cut apart. Then we can put in our stamp piece and stamp that portion with a darker pink. So if you have a large cluster of flowers like this and it has layering images, you can try cutting them apart so you can easily use multiple ink colors. 
Now it's time for the fun part of this card and creating those little strips of cardstock that go across the bridge. For this, I'm using that stripes die that I showed you at the beginning of this video. I'm keeping the negative space and the little pieces or the strips that go inside. And by the way, those strips are great for sentiment strips because they're all different sizes. So you could find the perfect width strip for whatever sentiment you have. So I highly recommend that background die. Now I cut it twice, so I would have two of each strip, and I'm gluing them together so they're a little bit thicker. You don't have to do this. I just love dimension on my cards. So I didn't glue the outline die, just the strips together, and I have those set aside and ready to go. Let's create our bridge card now. This is five and a half inches wide and four and a quarter inches tall. I will do four score lines as always. One is at one inch, and then the next is at one and three quarters of an inch. Then I will rotate my cardstock and do the same from the other end. One inch and one and three quarter inches. Once again, I'll fold the two middle score lines in and fold the outer two score lines out to create our simple bridge card. Again, you wanna use a heavyweight cardstock for this and you really wanna reinforce those fold lines so they kind of move easily. Now we can glue our pieces onto this. You could just glue this large flower die cut right across the bridge and create a bridge card that way, but I wanna use those stripes. Once again, I'm folding the left panel and taping it closed and keeping the right panel hanging open. Now I'm using the negative space of this die cut just to help me guide where the strip should be. So I'm just taping this here. I'm not gluing it down, I will remove it later just taping it there. Now I'm using strong liquid adhesive to put adhesive on the left panel and the right panel, not in the middle, only to the left and the right of those fold lines, and then gluing our strip in place. So I just pop our strip in place right into the negative space like a puzzle piece. And I'll continue to do this for each of them. So a little adhesive over here, a little adhesive over there, and then press that strip in place. You really want to press it well. We want these to stay put. A strong liquid adhesive is best, like Gina K Connect, or you can use a strong double-sided tape, like the one from Lawn Fawn. Now, I think these strips look really cool stretched across this bridge card, but you could do any background die, maybe a floral background die, and glue that so it's stretched across a bridge card too. Totally up to you. Now, after I've put down my last one, I'll give it a few minutes to dry. Then I'll remove my tape and remove that negative space die cut. So I'll just carefully remove it and I can save that negative space die cut for another project, but I wasn't careful enough. I tried to do it too quick and I ended up tearing it. So something to keep in mind. So now check that out. I love the look of that stretched across the bridge card. The rest of the card is very simple, so I did it off screen. All I did was glue our flower cluster to the front of the card and then added a sentiment right into the center of the flower cluster. And that sentiment is from the Thankful for Friends stamp set that I showed you earlier. And I also added some pearls here and there. So this design would work with pretty much any background die and would work with pretty much any stamps or die cuts you want to put on top of that. I plan to write my message right on the back of that, but you could also adhere a thin mini card to the back if you prefer. So you can see how this would be a great card to put on display because it stands so nicely. And of course it flattens down to four and a quarter by five and a half so it'll fit in a regular envelope. Okay, my next example shows how you can use your word or sentiment dies for bridge cards. Let's start with the inside of our card. This piece is five and a half inches tall and a little less than two and a quarter inches wide. I had these leftover flower images from the last cards, so I thought I'd use them to decorate this inside panel. So I'm cutting them up and gluing them here and there so that the entire panel is covered. Once I've covered it, I'll just flip it over and trim off the excess. And we have this fun decorative piece that'll go inside of our card. Didn't take long at all because I did those extra stamped images earlier. Always do extras, it's a huge time saver. Now I created a white bridge card exactly like I did the last one, the exact same thing, and then I glued the panel on the inside. 
For the words to stretch across the bridge, I use the new Pinkfresh Studio Phrase Builder Happy Die Set. They have a lot of different phrase builders in this beautiful font. This one's really cool because it has a bunch of words that you can build together. So you have happy, Thanksgiving, mothers, anniversary, Valentine's, holidays, uh, birthday, day. And then there are also the shadow dies for all of those words. So I cut out happy birthday in black and the shadow for those words from white cardstock and glued those together. It's nice to use a word die that has a shadow because it makes it stronger because it'll be stretching across the bridge. To adhere these, I'm folding and taping closed the left hand side and leaving the right hand side open. I'm putting adhesive only on the left edge and the right edge of the word happy because I only want it to glue on those little panels on the left and the right. I will then do the same with birthday. You really want to make sure that is secure on there because only a little bit is holding it there. So a strong liquid adhesive is a great option. And now I'll do the same with birthday. I'll put something heavy on that while it dries. So now we have our completed card. It fits nicely into an envelope. It's four and a quarter by five and a half, very little bulk to it. When you take it out, it pops up to the bridge card and you can see how the words stretch across the bridge. Now I did add in there, by the way, a peach cardstock strip and a gold cardstock strip to the left and right panels, but really you could do a very simple card design with this and keep the focus on the birthday message. I would just write something personal on the back or put a little mini card there too. Okay, my last card is one that didn't go as planned, but I wanted to show you how you can just make things work and also do a simple die cut over a bridge, such as a circle. Okay, so I'm starting with that same stripe background. I have that in my Misty stamping tool and I want to do a rainbow with this. I didn't need to use all of the stripes because I need a smaller piece. So I'm removing the bottom large stripe and the top two thin stripes, but I could have done them all if I wanted. You can either keep that negative space on there, that negative space frame, or you can remove it totally up to you. I decided to leave it there. So I knew where to put my little stripes each time. I have a piece of white cardstock in there and I'm starting with the bottom stripe and I'll stamp that with pink. When I want to stamp a stripe, I remove the stripe below and above it. In this case, there's just one above it. That way I can easily ink that single stripe. My little die or my little magnets in the way. So I just removed it and just make sure my cardstock's in the bottom corner each time. Once I'm done, I just wipe off that stamp, put in the next stri uh, stripe back into place. Now we're going to do that second stripe from the bottom. So I remove the stripe below it and the stripe above it. Again, the reason I'm removing the stripes below and above is so that I can easily ink that single stripe. And there's no reason to remove all of those because I wanna keep them nice and lined up. So this time I did it in a slightly darker pink. It wasn't dark enough, so I'm double stamping it to make it a bit darker. Let's do one more stripe here. So the third stripe from the bottom. I'll clean off the one we just stamped, add that stripe back in, remove the one we just stamped, and the one above the stripe that we're about to stamp. You kind of get into a rhythm doing this. It's very easy to do. And now I'll stamp this one with a red color. Now I'm going to continue to do this going all the way up until I have all my stri stripes stamped, which is a tongue twister. However, you're gonna see me do a major fail here. I wasn't using a magnet and I didn't use a sticky mat inside of my stamping tool. I was being really lazy and running out of time here and I paid the price. Here I came in with one of my last stripes. So you'll see me clean up this dark blue one, put that stripe back in and remove the others. And when I go to stamp this, uh, I stamped it off. My paper wasn't in the corner. So I wasn't careful enough and there. I ruined my little rainbow, but I never considered getting rid of this or starting over. I'm just gonna change my card plan. So I just trimmed this down so there's no purple on it. I just trimmed right against the blue and I kept going. I originally had intended to make these stripes be on the inside back of a bridge card, but I'm just gonna change things up a bit. Instead, I die cut a circle from that stripe piece and I added alphabet letters. Now this time I used a different alphabet die set. Let me show you another collection that Pink Fresh Studio just came out with. The dies and letters that I used earlier had a playful look. This has a more um, classic look. 
This is the Heather collection. There is the uppercase stamp set and there's the uppercase die set that matches up nicely. And once again, the dies include the outline of the letter that it cuts. There's also the lowercase stamp set and the lowercase die set. As I mentioned, I usually use lowercase, but whatever appeals to you is what you can use. And again, we have the dies that match up with the stamp set and it cuts the little outline. So off screen, I die cut the words miss you from white cardstock using the lowercase die set. I didn't actually use the stamp sets in this video, but they do match up. And I wanted to show you that because it's a unique, uh, unique offer to have that. On my stripe circle, I glued down the letters Miss You from white cardstock. I then put a little liquid adhesive around the letters and popped on the outline. Earlier in this video, I glued down the outline and the letters at the same time. This time, I put the outline on after. Really either works, it's up to you. I then, on top of the white letters, put a black letter. That way they would stand up more and have the nice white outline around it and it gives it a really nice finished look. So I did this for all of the letters and then I created my bridge card. This bridge card I created just like my last two examples. So I did the same dimensions and same score lines. I did this from craft cardstock and now I'm stamping that sweet blooms background stamp with white pigment ink. I just wanted a little interest to the background and white pigment ink with a background stamp looks really great on craft cardstock. So I stamped it on one side and then I stamped it on the other side. And you can see I have a little bit of too much ink there in the center, so I just take a dry cloth to dab that away, and now it's more even. To assemble everything, I am taping down the folded side on the left, so I'm folding it just like I did on all the other examples and just taping it there temporarily, and keeping the right side open. I'll put adhesive only on the left edge and right edge of this circle, and I'll put that down so the adhesive is only on that left little panel and the right little panel. So it'll pop up nicely when it's dry. And by the way, I did mat my stripe circle with a black circle just to make it pop a bit more. Okay, I'll use my T-ruler because I really want to make sure that my letters are straight. I didn't line up my letters perfectly in a line. I kind of um, made them a little cattywampus so it's a little more playful looking. Totally up to you how you line them up. And here we have our completed card in an envelope. It doesn't have too much bulk and it fits nicely. And when you take it out of the envelope, it pops up to form that bridge. You could write your personal sentiment there on that bottom below the circle. You could even use a smaller circle so there was more room. Or as I do, I just write my personal message on the back. I could have added more accents to this, but I decided to keep it simple and have the focus be on those colorful stripes. All right, there you have a bunch of examples from complicated to simple using bridge card designs. I hope you'll try this. I think it's a fun way to do something different. I normally like just doing regular cards that open normally, but I think when you go and do something special like this, it kind of kickstarts your creativity. If you're interested in these products, they are linked below as always. And here in the middle, I have a couple other videos, including another bridge card video. Thanks for watching. We'll see you soon and have a wonderful weekend.